Well, hey everybody, this is Ross. Um, the title of today's video is Help. Somebody help, my fig tree is dying. And I thought I would make this video because usually the answer is, a, is the same. It's usually 95% of you guys have the same problem. And I figured I'd make this video to help explain, um, to really get you guys a green thumb. There's a number of issues we're gonna cover. Um, overwatering, underwatering, rust, fig mosaic virus, yellowing of the outside of the leaves and also sunburn and the last thing I want to say before we get into all these different issues is don't give up as I said it's so hard to kill a fig they're very very resilient um, even if you just completely not water them you just completely neglect them the chances are they're alive they're gonna drop all the leaves um, but they're gonna go in some sort of dormancy and I had a friend of mine tell you a quick story who got divorced and he had a lot of fig trees and um, his fig trees because he got divorced he got kicked out of the house he all of his fig trees were just there in his backyard for about a month and a half to two months and he no one was watering them no one was taking care of them um, he told me he said Ross go over to the house pick up the fig trees bring them back to your house and I'll pick them up later so I did and I uh, I brought them back and I looked at them and I was like, oh my God, these trees haven't been watered. I can't believe that they're alive though. They're alive. It's been two months really. And that's what the fig tree does. It's basically a cactus. I mean, the thing stores so much water in the branches, in the trunk, in the roots, that it'll drop all of its leaves as like a self-defense mechanism. But uh, most of the time, the tree is just not dead. I mean, it's just crazy. And then the following season, they kind of spent the whole rest of the year like that. And then the following season, they woke up from that dormancy in the spring and put out a ton of fruits. So it's not like, uh, you know, all is lost if you lose a couple leaves here, guys, or if you get a couple spots on your leaves. Also, I've had my trees in the ground here and I have almost never lost a single tree and it's been zero degrees out here. So they're always gonna come back from the roots. If you guys can keep the roots healthy, it's next to impossible to kill your tree. So that's a really big tip. Even if the top dies, even if you cut back the top, even if a tree falls on it, even if the cold kills it, even if you just lose all your leaves in some freak storm, your tree is not going to die if you can keep the roots healthy. So that's what I wanna talk about really for the first part of this whole video is how to get healthy roots because this is just completely related to, well, first off, 95% of your problems, 95% of you guys have this issue. Also, um, you know, this is really going to teach you how to have a green thumb. So how do you grow plants? Well, how do you grow plants is you think about it, every plant needs sun, water, food, air. Air is another one. And air is one that's just like not ever talked about and really um, not understood by a lot of people. So air needs to go, not just in like air in the environment and all that, but air needs to go down into the soil to actually for the roots. The roots need an aerobic environment, not an anaerobic environment. So anaerobic means without oxygen. So if you have a lot of water in your soil and it's constantly wet and saturated, your soil is gonna start to turn anaerobic and you're gonna start to lose more and more air. So to kind of combat very wet conditions in your soil, you need to have a soil that's really well draining. And I mentioned this like in every single video I think I've ever put out basically, is that you need to have guys, a soil that has larger particles in it. So if you look at dirt, any kind of soil for the most part, it's pretty dense, right? It's pretty heavy. Uh, it's got a lot of different particles. If you look at it on a microscope, it's really quite dense. So what you need to do is add larger particles. You know, um, you can look at each individual grain of sand as an example, and they kind of form that one clump of sand, right? It's the same thing with compost. It's the same thing with clay or loam or all different soil types is that they all kind of have so many particles that then forms a, a clump of it, right? But if you add into that clump, no matter what it is, if you add in things like rice holes, perlite, vermiculite, uh, volcanic rocks of different types and 
Um, let's see, also bark. Bark's a really good one. So those larger pieces that let's say are about the size of a penny or even smaller than that, um, that's gonna really increase the airflow into your soil to keep the soil away from being anaerobic. And even if I were to just put on gallons of, of water into these pots, into these containers, um, it's not gonna necessarily matter too much because I'm gonna have the better drainage. The water is just gonna flow right out and I'm not gonna have so much water holding capacity that my soil is basically in a state that is consistently wet. So we wanna have a good water holding capacity, right? That's kind of the thing here that's a little bit difficult to understand is that let's say you had house plants and you killed a lot of your house plants, as I do to this day. The reason for that is that we have from the, from the store, all these plants are grown, no matter where you buy them, they're grown in something called peat moss. And that's usually it. There's very little perlite in there to add drainage. And that peat moss is very dense, small particles, holds a lot of water, it doesn't have a lot of airflow in it. So therefore, if we overwater our house plants by accident, we're not careful, it's very easy to then start getting anaerobic conditions in the soil and we actually can kill our house plants. It's the same thing with any of these trees here, guys. No matter what it is, fig, mulberry, apple, pear, whatever, okay? So you need to make sure that you're gonna set your tree up right from the beginning because otherwise you're gonna make this way more difficult for yourself down the road. Now, you may want to, and this is one little caveat, so depending on where you guys live, right? If you live in the desert, it's dry, it's very hot, uh, you actually, maybe you wanna do the opposite. You'd rather have more water than less water. I would rather have maybe less drainage, a better water holding capacity. Maybe I'd wanna have things like clay in my soil and maybe a little bit of bark, you know? Maybe like one third bark, one third clay, and one third compost. So that'll probably give me the perfect, you know, just enough, uh, you know, porosity in the soil, but also having good water holding capacity. Whereas here, I use half compost, half bark, which is very well draining, but the compost really does a nice job to hold that water in the soil. So I don't want things too dry, but I don't want things too wet, right? That's always the key to having the right soil moisture, which is literally 95% of your problem. So if you have leaves that are yellowing and falling off the tree, either that's too much water in the soil or not enough water in the soil. The way you can easily tell, usually, first off, 90, <laughs> Probably 90% of that 95% of you guys are overwatering your trees. So most likely you have too much water. And it's really easy to tell because if you can, if your soil is dry, what is normally gonna happen is that first off, the tree's gonna start dropping figs. The figs are gonna first start to fall off. When these figs fall off and you just have leaves, or let's just say you don't have any figs, you just have leaves, if you're not giving them enough water, the leaves are gonna droop. Now that could be a, something else too. That could be humidity shock. If it's very humid out here for a consistent number of days like it is here in Philadelphia, and then we have one r random dry day, all the leaves here are gonna start to droop. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they need more water in the soil. It just means that they need to transition well to that humidity now. Now what you'll notice that if it is indeed dry, if it is indeed, you're getting the droopingness, what'll end up happening if you get too much droopingness, droopiness is that you get some crumpled leaves here. The leaves start to crisp up, get real nice and crunchy, and then they turn brown like this and you can like kind of pick them off. This is the dead portion of the leaf because what had happened was couple of my trees here and there and there's another leaf back in there similar story is that we just had a couple dry periods here where these trees just weren't getting water and therefore uh, they did the droopiness and I noticed that right away and started giving them water but some of them didn't like that all that much and they started to get brown so that's a big one right there that's the way you can tell if it's too wet or too dry uh, 
Of course, if it's too wet, you'll see the um, yellowing of the leaves. Now, there's also rust. We'll get into the spots now. So there's really two different brown spots that you're normally going to see. One is rust, one is sunburn. The way you can tell the difference between those two is if you have rust, usually you're in the south. You're in a very humid place. It's almost unavoidable. What you need to do is really spray yourself some fungicide. Don't freak out, but you want to be on top of it because the worse it gets, the worse it is, the worse it's going to be. Um, it's hard to get rid of once you got it. So you need to be kind of on top of it in the beginning of the season if this is something you're really going to concern yourself with. Because if you get too much of that rust, you can you have your trees completely defoliated or mostly defoliated. You lose the leaves, you use the photosynthesis, you lose the carbohydrates, you lose the sweetness of your fruits. So really important to stay on top of this for some of you guys in the south. I like to use either a fungicide like copper. I think even better though is something called silica or silicon, um, which is basically a supplement that you can give your trees. It's a trace uh, element in the earth that really improves the natural disease resistance of your trees. Talked a lot about that recently in a video that we did. But basically, if you can spray either one of these things, either it's Dynagro Protect or some kind of silica or some kind of uh, rust or some kind of fungicide, sorry, once or twice a week, every week, you're going to really much, you're going to pretty much defeat rust. You're not really going to have it. What you also need to do is if you have it, pick up all the fallen leaves and get rid of them because those leaves have the disease on them. Now for sunburn, it's really simple. It's just basically, you'll know if you got it about one to three days later of you moving your tree from a very shady location out into the open. So or in a more sunnier location. So if you have it indoors, you move it outdoors, you had it underneath a greenhouse or underneath the plastic, and you move it out into more sun, it's gonna happen. You're gonna get some sunburn. So you're gonna see these brown spots not only on the leaves, but you're also gonna see them on the branches, the green growth, and you may even see some of that on the figs. Now that could be very bad because if you get sunburn on the figs, you're gonna lose the figs. If you get too much sunburn on the leaves, You'll, you'll lose the leaves, and therefore you actually won't have nearly as much photosynthesis. Again, not enough energy. So it's really important to keep these leaves. Make sure that when you transition these plants outside, you do it very slowly, right? One day you have them in two hours of light. Next day you have them in four hours of light, five hours, six hours, all the way up to the, the maximum amount of hours that you have in your yard. So. That's really important, and that's the two different distinctions there because they kind of look similar is rust and sunburn, but rust is only on the leaves, and sunburn is also on the branches, not just the leaves, but also on the fruits. Now, the last thing I want to mention to you guys is actually the fig mosaic virus because people bring this up all the time. Every fig has the fig mosaic virus, okay? There's no way that you can completely avoid it for the most part. However, you can really lessen the virus if you do something called rejuvenation pruning. We've talked a lot about that in other videos, and you can almost completely eliminate the virus that way. However, it's gonna always be there, and it's always gonna be more um, visible on younger trees. Your younger trees are going to not have enough nutrients. Usually they're not gonna be the healthiest trees. Um, once they get more established, once they start to um, you know, really settle themselves in and get the nutrients that they need by giving them a lot of food, you're gonna actually shake the virus almost completely. It's gonna be like it's not even there. You're never even gonna know it was there. What, how you can identify the fig mosaic virus because some of you guys have, very rarely though I've heard that some of you guys have like different things wrong with your leaves, like chlorosis and things like that. But this is what the virus looks like. You'll see these yellow spots. This is the most common form of it. You also get yellowing leaves, deformed leaves, leaves that just don't look very good. And again, over time, if your tree is healthy, it will eventually shake the virus with enough food. But if you have like chlorosis issues or, or nutrient issues, Cover all the micronutrients, guys. Make sure you have the right soil pH because that's really the biggest thing there in making sure that these trees are happy and healthy. The right pH, the right soil, 
uh, the, enough air in your soil, enough water in your soil, the right nutrients in your soil, um, and everything else kind of just takes care of itself here, guys. Um, so that's kind of it. I hope you guys are not killing your fig tree anymore. And again, I would just be a little bit more patient. Don't give up, guys. Um, you know, again, it's really difficult to kill these things. So my best, best of luck to you guys. I hope this helped. If you enjoyed this one, hit that subscribe button for me. Share this with your friend that maybe is killing their fig. We'll talk to everybody soon. Take care.